Hello friends, welcome. In this video, I will be talking about the source of the requirement of the cargo securing manual. Which particular regulation from SOLAS or a particular code says that a cargo securing manual should be made available on board a ship. During this video, I will cover the specific regulations from SOLAS which requires it and I would go into the details of the cargo storage and securing code. So let's get started. Starting with SOLAS Chapter 6, Carriage of Cargo and Fuel Oils, Regulation 5, which is Storage and Securing, there are 6 points. And if I go through all these 6 points, is basically talking about that whatever cargo that is loaded, stored on board, should be done in a way that it is safe for the ship, for the persons on board, and for the environment. And similarly in Chapter 7 of SOLAS, the Carriage of Dangerous Goods, Regulation 5, Cargo Securing Manual, it talks about cargo, cargo unit and cargo transport unit shall be loaded, stored and secured throughout the voyage in accordance with the Cargo Securing Manual which is approved by the administration. The Cargo Securing Manual shall be drawn up to a standard at least equivalent to guidelines developed by the organization. So this will be the last thing I will be discussing that what are these guidelines based on what this cargo securing manual was created. Now let me talk about the next reference that talks about the cargo securing manual which is your code of safe practice for cargo storage and securing. Resolution A714 Session 17 So here is the resolution and before I dive into it let me talk about the contents of the CSS code. It has 7 chapters and about uh, 14 annexes and there are about 4 appendices. I don't think for oral examination point of view you need to remember all this but it's good practice to have a fair idea about what the code contains. The foreword of the code clearly states the purpose of the code which is to provide an international standard to promote the safe storage and securing of cargo by drawing the attention of the ship owner that the ship must be suitable for its intended purpose. It's his responsibility to ensure that. It provides advice to ensure that the ship is equipped with proper cargo securing means. It provides general advice concerning the proper storage and securing to minimize the risk to the ship and personnel. It further provides specific advice on those cargoes which are known to create difficulties. It advises on actions which may be taken in case of heavy sea condition and it advises action which may be taken to remedy the effect of cargo shifting. After the foreword there is a general principle where it talks about the ship and persons on board should not be put at risk. Storage and securing must be carried out after proper planning, execution and supervision. Personnel which are responsible for storage and securing should be properly qualified and training. Personnel planning and supervising the storage and securing should have a sound practical knowledge of the application and the content of the cargo securing manual and when deciding on what kind of storage and securing shall be carried out it must be based on what is the worst condition which may be expected at sea and about ship handling decision which must be taken by the master he should consider the bad weather condition then coming to chapter 1 which is general it gives you the definition of various things like intermediate bulk container, cargo unit, portable tank, road tank vehicle, road vehicle, road trailer, etc. Talks about the forces and as you know there are three kinds of forces which are acting on the ship or its cargo at any given time which is longitudinal, transverse and vertical. And it gives us the advice that maximum force always acts on a point which is at a maximum distance from the metacentric height of the ship. In addition to what is just the internal factors like the design of the ship, unsuitable cargo distribution or bunker or ballast distribution, there may be forces which are coming from outside like effect of wind and green seas or there could be some improper ship handling like maintaining a speed which may not be very appropriate to the current weather conditions. The calculation for estimating all these forces can be found in the cargo securing manual. 
there are certain ships which have anti-roll device like fin stabilizers etc however when considering the behavior of the ship and when calculating the forces which are acting on the cargo during those conditions then effect of such devices should not be considered then in point number 1.4 it gives the advice on the behavior of different cargoes that some cargoes have a tendency to deform or to compact themselves which results in slackening of the securing gear and then there are the cargoes which have low friction coefficient and these cargoes have been advised to be stored using dunnage soft boards rubber mat etc then criteria for estimating the risk of cargo shifting it depends on the dimension and physical property of the cargo location of the cargo on board the ship suitability of the ship suitability of the securing arrangement for the particular cargo expected seasonal weather and sea condition expected ship behavior stability of the ship geographical area of the voyage and duration of the voyage and finally point number 6 is the one where it has mentioned the cargo securing manual that ships which are carrying cargo units and other entities covered in this code as outlined in resolution 489 Session 12 should carry a cargo securing manual as detailed in MSC circular 745 then coming to chapter 2 of the code it talks about the principles of safe storage and securing of cargoes it talks about the suitability of cargoes for transport cargo distribution cargo securing arrangement residual strength after wear and tear friction forces shipboard supervision entering and close spaces then there is a para on general elements that must be considered by the master so basically what master needs to take care of is there are four factors which are dependent upon the cargo securing and carriage first is that the area where the cargo is secured is clean dry and free from oil so that is what the master needs to take care of then master has to consider that the cargo which is coming it must appear to be in suitable condition for transport and it can be effectively secured when the place is okay the cargo is okay next thing the master needs to consider is that the cargo securing equipments in use are in good working condition and if they are in good condition then they must be used on the cargo to secure it on board the ship properly so these are the four points that must be carried out and considered by the master then the next point is about cargo storage and securing declaration so there are certain cargoes which are mentioned as per the imdg code and solas chapter 7 they have certain packing requirements transport requirements they must be fulfilled then coming to the next three chapters chapter 3 4 and 5 which talks about standardized non standardized or semi standardized cargo storage and securing they say that if a certain ship is designed to carry a certain kind of cargo then it should be approved by the administration and sufficient securing arrangement including securing points and gears should be available then coming to chapter 6 is about action which may be taken in heavy weather so to avoid excessive acceleration which will be the cause of losing your cargo you can make alteration of course and speed or a combination of both you can do heaving to heaving to is a situation where a ship master decides that the weather is so bad that he'll just maintain his heading just keep his engine at a speed where he can just maintain his position that is heaving to he's not making any progress he's waiting for the weather to subside that particular condition is called heaving to to avoid any damage to his ship or cargo then the master may choose to avoid the area which is affected by adverse weather completely or he may timely ballast or deballast to improve the behavior of the ship taking into account the actual stability of the ship then coming to chapter 7 it talks about actions which may be taken once the cargo has already shifted and these steps basically include alteration of course to reduce acceleration reduction of speed to reduce acceleration monitoring the integrity of the ship restoring or resecuring of the cargo diversion of route in order to seek shelter etc next come the annex part annex 1 talks about the safe storage and securing of containers 
and as you can see there are certain diagrams which are given these are the methods in which the lashing may be carried out so there is method a b c for the containers there are the figures on non standardized ships then annex 2 talks about portable tanks and there are simple diagrams which are given you would have seen all these diagrams in many of the cargo work textbooks and now you know where the diagrams are coming from so favorable angle against sliding tipping all these kinds of uh, securing is provided into this annex 3 then talks about portable receptacles and this is again the similar and preferred method of securing annex 5 again is about securing heavy items like locomotives and transformers and there are methods which are kind of similar to containers and the receptacles then annex 6 is about securing of coiled sheet steel and you must have seen this diagram where you are putting a wedge under the steel and there is dunnage which is keeping it in place then this diagram is also very common in the errol fernandes cargo workbook also this shoring choking in void between the coils securing of top tier against fore and aft shifting securing of end row in top tier against fore and aft shifting securing of end row in top tier against fore and aft shifting viewed from top then annex 7 is about securing of heavy metal products there is no diagram available in this annex 8 is about securing of anchor chain only recommendations then annex 9 is about metal scrap in bulk it gives you the recommendations and the hazards which are involved and this question is also very common in cargo work shifting of the stow which in turns cause a list shifting of individual heavy pieces which can rupture the ship side plating below the water line and give rise to serious flooding excessive loading on tank top or tween deck and violent rolling caused by excessive metacentric height these are the dangers which are associated with metal scrap and i think these are very obvious dangers considering what we are carrying then annex 10 is about safe storage and securing of flexible intermediate bulk containers and there is one diagram given for that then general guidelines for under deck storage of logs annex 11 and x12 is about safe storage and securing of unit loads some diagrams given for that and annex 13 is the method to assess the efficiency of securing arrangement for semi standardized and non standardized cargo and this particular annex has been later added to the code and this is an update so this basically provides with the calculations when considering the safe working load of the cargo securing uh, gears that you will be employing on the ship in the next video when i'll continue with the contents of the cargo securing manual there will be this term which is maximum securing load which is a term which is used to define the load capacity for a device used to secure cargo to a ship and safe working load can be substituted for msl for securing purpose provided that it is equal to or exceeds the strength as defined by the msl so as you know there is a factor of safety which is applied to the breaking stress to get the safe working load for calculating the msl also there is a factor of safety like for shackles rings and deck ice there is 50% of the breaking strength now if safe working load is 50% then msl is equal to your safe working load or the safe working load should exceed the strength of the msl then it can be considered and there are other calculations which are provided into this there is a rule of thumb the total of the msl value of the securing device on each side of the cargo item should equal the weight of the item basically if you are securing 100 tons then the securing gears should be capable of handling 100 tons on each side then there is appendix 2 which gives you the explanation and interpretation of method to assess efficiency of securing arrangement Appendix 3 which gives advanced provisions and considerations applicable to very heavy or very large cargo item. 
then appendix 4 advanced provisions and considerations applicable to semi standardized cargoes and finally annex 14 and the last one guidance on providing safe working condition for securing of containers on deck and this is what i'm also going to discuss in the cargo securing manual it will talk about the cargo safe access plan and this particular annex gives you all the details that must be included in the cargo safe access plan which is a requirement of the cargo securing manual and obviously this particular code this plan gives basic recommendations on what should be made available on board the ship to ensure that persons who are involved in securing of the cargoes are safe throughout the operation i hope so far it was a useful video for you i know it was a long and probably not a very interesting one however now you know that chapter 6 and 7 regulation 5 talk about the cargo securing manual and cargo storage and securing code also requires a cargo securing manual in the next video i will only talk about the cargo securing manual it contains and requirement if you have any feedback suggestion or comment then please do write down below all the best for exams and as always thank you for watching